start off with a statement from you, Mike. Um, lost my voice a little bit, sorry. Um, we were terrific tonight. Uh, just really played, uh, you know, uh, well. And, uh, you know, starts on the mound. And, um, you know, Hunter was you know, just like he's pitched, you know, the second half of the season. Um, unfortunately for him, we uh, we didn't play, you know, great defense early. And um, not taking anything away from Arkansas. But, he, you know, he shouldn't have given up a run today. You know, uh, we um, mispositioned uh, Gonzalez in the first inning and uh, allowed a you know, routine ground ball to the shortstop, become a base hit to start the game. Uh, and then uh, with two outs, uh, sun, wind, you know, fly ball to, to left field. And so he actually got five outs in the first, you know, inning. And so, uh, and then of course, you know, two unearned runs in a second. But um, I think what people haven't seen before or haven't seen, if you haven't seen Hunter before, you saw why he's so good that, you know, here's a freshman on the, the biggest stage um, in, in amateur baseball and he didn't let it affect him. He just continued to pitch and work and uh, grind. And, uh, you know, offensively, we were we were really, really good. Uh, you know, Mike Clement and the offense, just a great approach. And, uh, you know, uh, got some hit, huge hits. I thought we, we got some big walks. Uh, so many guys, you know, had you know huge days. Of course, you know Calvin and and Justin, but others. Elko had a huge home run, uh, one of the ball, longest balls I've ever seen hit here. Um, and then, uh, you know, I thought Graham had a good day as well. A couple base hits and a couple really good abs. But just uh, a really good night for us. Okay, let's start open it up to questions for the student athletes only right now, and we'll start back here in the back. Hey guys, Austin Elders with the Rebel Walk. This is for Justin and for Calvin. Uh, Calvin, you had a three hit night. Justin, you had a four hit night. Just kind of talk about what you guys were seeing for the pitching staff, particularly with how many pitchers that they that they used against y'all tonight. Justin, start. Um, yeah, we, we we had a scouting report and we we, we thought they were going to staff it, and which they did. And you know they threw a pitcher <laughs> in inning there until you know kind of got out of the way, got out of hand. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, you know, we knew what we were doing. You know what what our scouting report was, and you know, just go up there and have tough at bats. You know, and and try to get each pitcher out of the game is what we did. Calvin, yeah, kind of going off what JB said as well. We kind of knew what they were going to come in and do, uh, and just really compete well at the plate and, and keep an approach uh, through each pitcher they threw out there. Okay, Mike. Uh, Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. This is for each of you. Not that you weren't a confident team before, but the longer this goes on, does your confidence and your belief reach a new level? Who do you want to answer that? Any of them. Okay, why don't you start, uh, uh, Justin? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't. Not that you weren't confident before, but the longer this surge goes on, does the confidence and the belief and, and understanding of what you guys might accomplish does it reach a new level uh, i mean no doubt we we're, we're a great team and we knew that from the start you know and we had a, a rough patch there in the middle where we were 7 14 uh but you know we just stuck together and you know now i don't i don't know how many wins we have in a row now but uh you know just with the leadership of tim elko uh, we just stuck together and just kept winning games hunter uh yeah like you said uh obviously baseball is a big momentum game and we're building a lot of momentum right now. Uh, that's obviously what you look to do in the postseason. And getting hot is, is a true thing in baseball. Uh, just keep building confidence, and that's what we look to do. OK, Mitch. Mitch Kutcher, Mitch Kutcher CBS 247. Hunter, your bats got going early today. How does that help you have success on the pitching side of things? Yeah, it's huge. Uh, pitching with the lead's huge. And these guys have been able to do that for me lately. Um, I think I've had a, a good amount of run support lately, and it's easier to pitch with the lead, obviously, and than being down runs or tied, having to make every single pitch perfect. Uh, so yeah, it allows you just to flood the strike zone and let whatever happen happen. Okay. Right here. Matt Tallarini from World Baseball Network. This question is going to be for Justin Bench. Justin, how much confidence have you been feeling after the plate? Four hit night. I mean, just unre unremarkable stature you've been having this season. What are the mechanics that you were bringing um, with the pitching staff that you have been seeing with Arkansas for most of the season? Uh, you know, I was just trying to have a good at-bats, and a lot of people had good at-bats today. 
um, with Tim Elko and, and the big home run and Calvin. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we're just working with Coach Clem and, and, and the scouting report and just trying to figure out what, what that day um, the pitcher's going to bring. Okay, right here. Jake Thompson, Ole Miss Spirit. Justin, how invaluable has it been this past couple weeks with, with what Calvin and Garrett have done at the bottom of that order, kind of presenting you opportunities when you get up there and the order flips? Uh, very valuable. Um, you know, having Garrett would be able to come in and, you know, play any position in the infield, um, you know, he, in Calvin for sure. Uh, everybody, you know, having the having the eight, nine um, hitter come up, you know, getting the order to turn around, um, you know, for Gonzo and Tim and Kevin, it's, it's huge. Okay, right here. Michael Katz, Daily Journal Hunter. Um, in that third inning, uh, they have a leadoff walk, and you, you pick that, that guy off. And they had kind of gone back and forth those first couple innings. Did that pick off kind of feel like a big moment for you guys? Absolutely, yeah. I think they got the leadoff guy on the first three innings, counting that one, I guess. Uh, and erasing him and technically getting the leadoff out was huge. Uh, it, it allowed me to settle in and uh, attack the next guy and uh, start to settle in a little bit and start to Put it on cruise mode. Mark? Noah Darling, CDBS no, 247. No. I'm sure you've heard it before, Hunter, but you look like Doug Nikazi out there, and you wear the same number he does. How much do you try and emulate his game when you're throwing? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't really try to emulate his game. A lot of respect for the guy. He was an incredible pitcher here, uh, of course. But no, I don't really, I don't think we have a too much of a similar style, but yeah, uh, I've gotten that a lot recently. We look alike, wear the same number, left-handed, everything like that. But I don't, I don't know if I really try to imitate my game after anyone. Uh, yeah. Okay, way in the back. Is that Mitch? Yeah, yep. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Uh, Justin, you mentioned, mentioned uh, Tim Elko and his leadership a couple of times up there. What have you seen from him, and not just this year, but through the time that you've been together and what he's meant to this program? Yeah, I mean, I've... I've been here uh, with him, you know, every, every year he's been a captain and, uh, you know, he's also my roommate. So seeing him off the field, um, you know, with the team and on the field, uh, he's able to just bring us together, um, keep his composure and um, just make sure that everybody just is doing the right thing. Okay, guys, got a game tomorrow night. Thank you. You're good. No game. No game. Somebody's next week. I was going to say, I thought, I thought if you won, you didn't play. Uh, that's what they told us before it's going, the tournament. It's going, 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 going. Game, 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 game. Sorry. <clears throat> Mitch will take care of any other requests, and we'll start here with Kendall for Mike. Kendall Roger, D1 Baseball. Coach, as you just kind of – Sit in the dugout and just watch the the run that this team is on. Like, what's going through your mind? It's almost like I need to keep my hands off because these guys are just rolling right now. Um, there's some of that. You know, some we we've uh, over the last uh, probably three weeks we've we've met less. Uh, you know, as a as a team. You know, there's things obviously we we have to meet. You know, we have to prepare with the scouting report, and as Justin alluded to a few times. Um, you know, Clem meeting with the hitters, I'm meeting with the pitchers. Um, but, you know, a lot of the team meetings we've either, you know, shortened or uh, did away with. Um, and so, uh, you know, so there is some of that. You know, that's, that's not even being, you know, uh, sarcastic. Uh, but just it's been a neat run. You know, you've, you've seen so many, you know, teams over the years, you know, get on this. And it's, you know, uh, I think Hunter said, you know, getting hot's real. You know, it's it's not just some facetious, you know, uh, it's confidence, kids playing well. Um, and so when they're doing that, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, the best thing you can do as a coach is let them go. And, uh, you know, we've tried to do that, you know, and sometimes that's hard, right? That's, you know, it's not what we, we do often. So, but uh, sometimes the best thing you can do is just get out of their way. Okay, right back here. Hey, Coach, Austin Eldridge with the Rebel Walk. Uh, Ten out of you guys' 19 runs in this tournament have come with two outs. Just kind of talk about the two-out approach that you're seeing from the guys and what's working for them. Well, I think we said it uh, the other day. Uh, somebody asked a similar question, and I learned from my my uh, my mentor a long time ago, you know, the most uh, important thing to win a baseball game is dominant pitching, and we've had that. But the second most important thing is the timely hit, and and we've had a ton of those, you know, over the last three weeks. And, uh, you know, a, a really good offense, as I think many of you know. Uh, but, you know, sometimes offensively it's, it, it, 
you know, to get things rolling, it's tough. And, uh, um, you know, uh, it's hard to score runs unless you're going to score them with two, two outs. I mean, you can score them with no and you can score them with one. Uh, but, man, those those two out runs are backbreakers, you know. And when they happen to you on the other side, when you're, you know, a pitch away from getting off the field, and we've we've been in that position as well. And so it's, it's nice that we're getting some of those. Okay, Mitch. Mitch Kutcher, CWS 247. Coach, you've had a lot of highs and lows this season. What's it mean for you to be 2-0 and in Omaha and now 1-1 away from the championship series? Um, obviously, we're excited. Uh, th- this is a big game, I think, you know, either, you know, losing the first one or the second one. And, man, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's tough. It's tough to get through because uh, you got to play four days in a row and you got to win the next three, um, you know, just to, to, to get to the championship series. So, you know, this was, you know, as I thought about this morning and trying to go through the pitching plan and different scenarios and, you know, um, you know how we, we, we would use the bullpen, uh, knowing that uh, if you lose, you know, you got a lot of innings to get through, you know, over the next few days. And um, fortunately, we didn't have to use that, but we were we were ready to empty the tank and use whoever uh, tonight and not worry about the next day to, to win this game. And fortunately, you know, we didn't have to do that. Um, you know, Hunter was just really, really good. Um, but it was it was neat. Uh, I, I may have said it or maybe I'm confused. Maybe I said it on the on the radio uh, before I came in here. But, you know, tonight, Mason Nichols through true freshman hasn't thrown since Coral Gables. You know, our closer, Brandon Johnson, hasn't thrown since Coral Gables. I mean, that, that's amazing. Like, your closer, you're winning games, your closer, because we haven't been in a game closer than four runs. And so I don't like bringing in the closer, as you can see tonight, when you have a big lead. It just, they're not used to pitching like that. You're, they're used to pitching with a lot of adrenaline and, and tight ball games. And so we, you know, there's times where we just won't run them out there, you know, because the lead's so big. And, uh, and because we've played so well and we've scored so many runs and pitched so well in front. Front, you know, but that that was it was nice, and we had to get those guys out yeah you know, out there today, regardless of the score. You know, those guys had to touch the mound. Okay, right here, Nick Sus, Clarion Ledger, Mike. For a guy like Calvin, who's kind of had his ups and downs this year, what can a game like this mean for him? And kind of what have you seen from him that kind of brought the bat back yeah, after a rough yeah. couple of months? He's uh, we we inserted him. Um, one of those games in Coral Gables, and he had a good day. Uh, hit an opposite field double, and you know we've been playing him ever since. And uh, he, as you saw, Nick did this at the beginning of the season, and uh, and and we really needed that. It was a shot in the arm because that was when Dunhurst went down with a pulled hamstring this you know few weeks, and you know Calvin's you know. Uh, be, be a catcher on probably 95 percent or 98 percent of the other teams we just happen to have Hayden Dunhurst so he doesn't get to get behind the dish very much but in that in that uh, time uh, we we needed him to catch but boy I mean he hit 500 you know like the first you know three weeks of the season uh, and then when we started conference play he wasn't playing regularly that can happen offensively he, he struggled he struggled a little bit in offense uh, offensively in, in conference play but you know the last few weeks he's been uh, terrific and you know we, we need it it's right at the right time Jake uh, Jake Thompson on the spirit kind of to that and uh, kind of what I asked Justin just how invaluable has it been with what Garrett and, and Calvin have done in the yeah. eight nine to flip it and, and give you all some opportunities at base when when the top of the order gets there those are the best offenses right the, the best offenses where you sit up and you hear coaches say you know one through nine they're difficult it's hard to navigate through that lineup um, there's lineups that are scary in the middle they're scary there's lineups that are top heavy uh, we've had some really good lineups here and those lineups that are really good or you know you look up in the eight hole guys you know hitting three something or he's got 10 10 home runs i mean you look at peyton chatney he's got 11 home runs and you know he's been batting seventh eighth or ninth you know the you know practically the the, the whole season so uh i think because baseball is such a neat game where you can't call time out at the end right and give it to your best player right design a play to throw it to him or let him take the final shot baseball is that that game where that get to the ninth inning, the lineup's the lineup. Those guys are batting. And so, uh, or as somebody asked earlier, you know, with two outs, uh, you know, the runners are on and you can't, you can't bat Tim Elko. You know, you can't devise a play. So, you know, the, the, the best offenses are ones that can hit, you know, one through nine because, you know, that's going to give you the most opportunities to score. Okay, more questions for John. 
Or, uh, 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 it's been a long day. Just uh, give him a break. It's all right. Whoever this guy is. Mike. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's me. Thank you. Uh, thanks, guys.